Okay. Gosh. That's the funnest thing ever. Uh, we recently did the transmission oil cooler line. It was leaking, replaced the fitting O-rings, replaced the line, and now we're going to do the, uh, just a complete oil flush, uh, drop the bottom of the pan, replace the sealer on the bottom of the pan, and replace the filter and put some fresh fluid in. So, to get started with that, we will take the eight millimeter bolts off the bottom of the pan. I actually did this on Dan's Saturn L200, so kind of know the process already. There's no easy way to do this without making a mess. And I just reminded myself that we probably should have went and dumped some of that fluid. Oh, and we're already starting to make. So we'll get all those bolts off and let that dump. Gosh, that's the funnest thing ever. It's a feature. Oh God, it's coming at me. So, now this exposes, exposed our filter, which is just a pressure fit in the front here. The new filter comes with a little, uh, fresh sleeve, but uh, we are going to skip that because it is really difficult to pull out. Just gonna try to clean up this mating surface. The kit also comes with a fresh gasket. So we'll put our fresh filter back up in here. Clean off the bottom of the pan. There's usually a magnetic piece on the bottom of the pan to catch any metal shavings that, you know, through the wear and tear of a transmission, you're gonna have Metal shavings circulating through there. So here's a fresh filter. Bee boo bop that guy back in there. Alright. Okay, so replacing the gasket, you just get your finger under one of these edges and then start peeling it off. And you want to clean this edge off. Transmission fluid really doesn't like moisture, so you want to make sure the inside of this pan is nice and dry before you seal it back up. Cleaned off my magnets. Now this is going to be a little annoying because this one doesn't have those little nubs to kind of hold it in place. So we're going to have to be careful when putting this back up on the car to make sure that all of these, these holes line up with their respective screw. I don't know if we maybe just tack this down with like a little CA glue. It's just moving a lot. <clears throat> well, it was sitting in a box, so it's not flat. Flat. Didn't I have another? There was one by me. Yeah, hold up, lift. Oh, Dan, you're gonna get dirt up in there, man. You're gonna get dirt, dirt, dirt up there. Well, what's, uh, what's happening there? There's that. Not being able to get that hole over. I see, can't, I can't see what you're seeing. So there's no fix. There's no hole there. I wonder, is there literally no hole there? There's no hole. I wonder if maybe that's where there was a nub on the other one. You know? Seems like a place where a bolt should be. tells you when you can stop filling. So we'll take that screw out and then fill from the top and once it starts stripping out of here, you stop filling, put this screw back in, put the cap back on and warm the trans up and see, and then maybe top it up. All right, 
So the overflow bolt is an 11 millimeter. Take that out, put a pan underneath it and start filling from the top. <clears throat> so it's good to have a uh, funnel with a neck on it like this. The fill is directly on top of the transmission. Bell housing. I believe we are supposed to use Dexron 6. So we got you know, our auto store special here. Dexron 3 or equivalent, which the Dexron 6 meets the Dexron 3 requirements. Okay, so we will turn the car on, check the, uh, let it warm up in, in gear, I believe, right, Dan? Yeah. And then, uh, Keep adding fluid until it comes out of the overflow, but we should be pretty good now and we'll just let any excess bleed off that overflow. So as always, thanks for watching and tune in next time.